peu. <rire> We got this thing at the auction in Colorado, right? It was, it's pretty damn handy. It's really handy. Absolutely. All right, it's time for this truck to come in and get some repair work. It's not due for a service or anything like that, but for the last, oh, I don't know, about a year, I've had some intermittent problems come up. Intermittently, I would have my fuel gauge just be completely out of whack. And I was getting a, an error message about the trailer brake controller. And it would happen initially when I would like be a rainy day driving down the highway and all of a sudden I'd get this error message and a couple of different ones and just a bunch of intermittent kind of what I call gremlins. I've got a little pocket scanner. I'm gonna plug that in and see if we can get any details to give me some guidance on where to start for the diagnostic. Because this has got a flatbed on the back, um, I'm gonna be probably looking for something happening back in there where there's more opportunity for moisture, mud, dirt, debris getting into connections or mud hanging on wires, pulling on connections or cracking and opening the wires and creating shorts or opens and just problems like that. There's so many opportunities. Unfortunately, it's going to be one of those kind of diagnostics where it just takes time. So we'll start with pulling some engine code diagnostics and warning codes and see what information we can get from codes. And I'll probably have to just look them up online and see if I can get some detail about the codes then dive deeper into each of the different components and see what we can get found. There's skunk out here. What? There's a skunk. Can you smell it? Oh yeah, strong. You don't think it's down below? Sure it is. Down off the road. Oh yeah. They only stink when they're getting harassed. So that's either a car or a coyote or a dog. Remember we saw that that bomb in the, like five kits last spring, right here, like right below us, but way well, down on the road. And then Amy is like, I should pick it up and take it home with me, and I'm like, Amy, <laughs> no, don't touch the babies. <laughs> She's got cats, so she'd have a full on picking this huge ball right now. Her plates. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go finish my note. Okay. I'll see you later. This pocket scanner is nothing fancy. It's just, you know, I think it was $200 pocket scanner off the shelf at the parts house. And it can't do everything that a factory tool can do, but it can pull codes and it has some functionality for other modules and some global OBD2. So one of my first ones is fuel level sensor circuit high voltage. Reductant purge valve control circuit low voltage. I'm only showing two codes. So we've got one circuit causing a low voltage and one circuit call calling for a high voltage. So maybe I'll start looking to where both of those circuits are in common. The reductant purge valve would be my DEF tank and that would be the valve that 
evacuates the lines probably so they don't freeze. And then the fuel tank level sensor. So somewhere where those two come together, which is likely at a body harness or somewhere up under here. So I guess I'll roll around and find out. I think I will go through a quick scan on all the modules real quick to make sure. I think there's like 38 computers in this truck or something like that. It's, it's, it's insane. <laughs> so this is going to go through and scan each and every individual computer in, this, in the truck and see if any, anyone has any codes within itself that don't come up on just the general engine scan. My thinking is that in some of these other modules, we may find some kind of a communications error code or something like that that is not uncommon when you have a kind of an intermittent issue, but it helps point you in the direction which ones are not being able to communicate. You can kind of trace that back in the harness layout to figure out where it's at. Okay, here we go. So pulling that brought up a total of 16 codes, it looks like. No, 16 modules, excuse me. 16 modules. There's six codes in the engine module, six in the glow plug control module, four in the electronic brake control module, three in the trailer brake control module, one in the HVAC control module, and that's it. So let's do the HVAC one first, just to see what, since it's only one. Passenger compartment temperature sensor circuit high voltage or open. Okay, so anything that we're getting this high voltage or an open voltage or a low voltage, these are usually dealing with that five volt reference signal, which is the communications cable wire, or it's in a wire that is usually like a supply voltage. It supplies 12 volts and it's finding either too high or too low. We can look these up. I'm gonna write it down. So 15 unique codes and almost all of them are either high or low voltage on a circuit or a feedback circuit voltage erratic kind of kind of thing. I've seen this U100 code more than once where it's a lost communication. There's a, a network wire, CAN wires that go around uh, and connect every module in the truck. And those basically have like a status signal that floats around on there. And Every computer needs to say, hey, I'm awake, I'm alive, and I'm here. And if something doesn't report back, then one of them will flag and, hey, I didn't hear back from this guy. Essentially, that's how that works. That U100 code is really common with that. That came out of the electronic brake control module and said it lost communication with the engine control module. Nobody else saw a loss of communication, so that's telling me that it's more than likely it's localized at the electronic brake control module. The brake control module is giving me one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got like five or six of the codes are either in the electronic brake control module or the trailer brake control module. And they are all dealing with high voltage or low voltage on a circuit. So many of these codes have to do with high voltage or low voltage on the, on the signal, on a circuit signal. So we likely have some kind of either an abrasion that's worn through and it's causing voltage to jump between wires. So I'm gonna start by looking for just a visual observation on wiring harnesses that are exposed in areas where there's common modules on the list. So we're gonna start poking around and see what we can see for loose connections, wires that are rubbed, things that are come loose, harnesses not secured where they should be, and just start looking for problems. So the reason that I'm starting here, for one, 
there's several major uh, module connections just inside this fender well on the engine side. It's tucked up underneath the battery and the fuse block and the power brake booster, things like that, and all up in there. But it's all really easy to see it from the wind, from the wheel well. So I'll pull this wheel well out and take a look. All these major components come up here and that's also where one of the major body um, harness connections through the firewall into the engine or into the interior of the truck. With as many different systems as we got, and the fact that we've got also a left front wheel speed sensor in the mix with those. I'm gonna start here at the left front. All those things coalesce in this one location. So I'll get this wheel well out of here. That will give us a bigger window. I don't know if you can see in there, but you can see, maybe you can see. So we've got all kinds of major wire harness connections down here. Right here is the transmission control module and there's like five connections on the other side of it. All kinds of wire right here. So I'm gonna start looking around here and see what we can see happening. Well, I can tell you one thing I see right away that's our wheel speed sensor wire. That wire comes down around the back of the steering knuckle down to the wheel speed at the wheel bearing. So that right there is an immediate first problem. That wire is pulled right apart. So we can fix that and that'll clear the wheel speed sensor part of the codes. But now I'm definitely going to get digging into all of these other connectors looking for any spot where the wires rubbed or been able to rub and create an open, anything like that. And we'll start there. Sounds like she's teaching 12 year olds. Well, right now I feel like I'm a bit of a 12 year old. <laughs> you feel like a 12 year old right now?
putrefy bacteria or viruses. 40 millimeters of mercury at 70%, it says that if we go down, we're going to a lower pH, according to the legend to the right, decreases as the amount of oxygen available decreases. So it's conditions that decrease the percent saturation and increase temperature. And the opposite condition increase the percent saturation of hemoglobin by oxygen. So if the partial pressure of oxygen is low, there's less oxygen in the blood. The kidney is going to respond to that condition and release erythropoietin, which is movement of the blood through pulmonary circulation. I didn't see anything else in the wheel well to worry about for now. So I'm going to come up underneath here and look at the brake control module. Look at the connections and stuff there, as well as the connections and stuff near the fuel tank and def tank, just to see if I can see anything obvious underneath there as well. I didn't see anything down along the main electronic brake control module under the uh, cab by the driver's door. I didn't see anything there that jumped out at me yet, um, but most of the harness is pretty coated in mud. So I'm gonna need to back the truck back out and get up underneath there and rinse that all off real good and make sure everything's clean. But for now, let's go under the back and look at the trailer brake control module and see what we can see back there. That's the main body harness that goes to the lighting and trailer plug, etc. And right up in there, that's the trailer brake control module above the spare tire. And, oh wait. I can see it from here. Right up there. I can see wires. I can see copper sticking out of the insulation. Right there. So we got broken wires there so i'll need to drop this spare tire down out of the way and get those connectors disconnected and pulled down and repair those wires too right there We'll fix those. That's two for two. See what else we can find crawling around underneath this thing.
That dang there looks like it was chewed on. All the way around, a couple of the wires are broken. Just about looks like rodent teeth marks with bite marks, something chewing on it, tearing it apart. Tucked up where it is, there's no way. Could have been anything else, gotta be. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay, well, let's see if we can get. Enough of this to come down that we can Yeah, that definitely looks like bite marks. There's a divot and a divot. Like one, two, maybe three in a row. I'm gonna clean this up. Rinse all that mud out of there out of here and make sure that nothing else is damaged make sure that that's all clean before I go back together with it. Yeah. Set that up there. Turn this over here where I can see it. Alright. So clean that up. So, black wire definitely looks exposed. Red wire looks like surface damage. Brown wire, surface damage. 
black and yellow is yeah completely broke through and powdered that one's been broken for a minute green wire is hanging on by a few strands blue wire safe everything else looks okay these two two pairs of wires that are twisted up that's those can wires the can, those network wires those twisted pairs send the signal that's what it uses for the communication wires that communicate from uh, from this control module to another module so that's what I was talking about earlier Those two are fixed. That one's okay. That one's okay. That black one needs some attention. It's just gross. It's corroded pretty bad. this up and put it back together. Those are clean and dry. Clean and dry. Oh, 
All right. Okay. Well, that's got two of the major problems fixed. Wheel speed sensor fixed, trailer brake control module fixed. I don't know which two wires those are that were damaged, but they could have been causing back feed into other systems. But I'm not convinced that that's all the problem yet, so I'm going to keep digging around. Next is to look real close at the uh, fuel tank and then follow that harness forward all the way to the brake control module and then check it as well really close and move my way forward down that harness back to the fender well and look for more. But six o'clock, it's getting dark. I'm gonna call it a night for tonight and come back at it tomorrow. Okay, so yesterday we found two major problems. One set of wires under the front wheel that was torn out and a set of wires going into the trailer brake controller that were torn out. Now we gotta keep going. Um, let me get my list here. Get my code list that I wrote down. Uh, trailer brake controller. We've got three codes in there, all about circuit higher low voltage, which very, very likely is the bad wires that we found back there, causing all of that. In the brake control module, we have a code for the wheel speed sensor up here on the front that we found those wires were bad and fixed. Invalid data, high voltage, and low signal amplitude on the wheel speed sensor. So all of the brake stuff is probably taken care of with those four wire issues that we had. Cruise control brake switch circuit. So there's a very good possibility that some of that has to do with that trailer brake control module back feeding causing erratic signal on what would be the brake signal. All these connectors, see how they have a little barbed pin that barbed pin has a hole in the fender well skirt that it's supposed to press into to hold that wire in a very specific spot so that it's not down rubbing against bolts and and other wire harnesses and things like that you see this harness here as it goes over the frame rail down alongside the engine and to the inside of the frame rail it has a barb connector right there and it's actually supposed to be snapped into this bracket up here and that keeps it secure and away from the engine and rubbing on other things now when i did take this fender skirt out i noticed that none of these were snapped in i don't know when i would have had this fender skirt out i can't think of a time that i have so either somebody else took it out at some point didn't bother to snap those in or they've come loose or pulled out which is a little less likely but so those are the kind of things that i'm looking for when i'm looking around doing a visual inspection on the wiring harness i'm looking around for where are the factory connectors that are holding things where are the clamps and the tie backs and make sure they're secured in place and that the harness isn't hanging or doesn't look like it's routed in a direction that it shouldn't be that doesn't make sense for the harness. Fuel level sensor high voltage and reductant purge valve low voltage. So I'm now gonna dive in around the fuel tank. 
and see from the fuel tank forward what I can find if there's anything that's like out of place or not not quite buttoned up like it should those are the first obvious places to start looking and make sure that the harness is in place everything on top of the tank looks okay all the wire is secure everything feels tight and secure and in a good place and where it should be because this is a diesel there's no pump in the tank itself it's just a sending unit and the fact that we still had some codes in the brake control module anyway I'm gonna go up there and look around, see what I can see up there. So I, I decided after I dug around on the uh, fuel tank and the def tank, I couldn't see anything out of place or broken or obvious of a wiring issue back there. And I could see nothing else up in, in and around the fender well. All right, so these are the holes I was talking about these connectors press onto some of these holes here and that's what keeps them in place. So, as I get this up here to see where they go, I will find the corresponding hole for each of those. That one goes there. That one. I was able to get those connectors back up into that fender skirt where it belongs. Uh, got them pressed up into the hole so that those retainers keep those connectors up and tight and in place. So for now, we're just going to go ahead with it. Um, those other wires have all been repaired and they're set. And I've cleared the main codes and nothing comes back on initially. Now, most of those codes were current codes, meaning when you cycle the ignition on, it does a self check and it says, hey, we've got a problem. And none of those have come back. So I'll just drive it the next day or two. My door latch cable broke, which isn't terribly uncommon on these trucks, but the cable end up here broke off inside the door. So got the new one finally. Get this put back in, put the door back together. Seems like, seems like the broken parts always come out easier than the new parts go back in with this kind of stuff. Getting the door, the door handle fixed, that's a big plus. The door clips we found to get that all back together. I hate those things. They always, seems like one breaks when you take it off and then going back on another one breaks or something like that. It's just, they just are always a pain in the butt that way.
So I decided what would be best for now was to go ahead and clear the codes and let everything reset. So I'll take it into town today. I'll pick up my pig feed and get that stuff done. And we'll just drive it the next day or two, make sure everything's okay. The fact that all of these codes had a voltage signal problem, there's a very, very high chance that the shorted wires that I found were causing that feedback in the other modules. All right, flatbed's done. It does not do for a service yet, so we won't service that. So it looks like the next thing that's gonna come in here is gonna be the excavator. Clean it out real good inside, grease everything. I know it's due for an engine service. I know the final drives are due for their scheduled service. And I think we're gonna probably pull the rubber pads off of that. Um, when we drive it out, we'll take them off and have it back to just steel tracks. I've never had the rubber pads off of this machine. And I think it would do a lot better out here just having those grouser exposed. So that will be the next one. We'll get that machine in and get going on it.